Hello and welcome to a video from filmsbychris.com. I'm Chris, that's Chris with a K, link in the description of my website. I recently saw a post where someone asked for a more user-friendly option or, or alternative to LMMS. LMMS, uh, in my opinion, doesn't get any simpler than it is. So I just thought I'd do a quick overview of basic functionalities of LMMS because it's been years since I've done a video on LMMS. When you open up LMMS, you, this, these are your options. You're going to see this. So over here on your left side, you have different options. Right here you have instruments. These are different instrument synthesizers and sample options, but those are like the programs for those synthesizers. If you come down here to where there's the star, these are presets for all those things. And then also here with the little music symbol, these are just samples that you can sample into different categories. So you can pull in different AUG files or WAV files and use them. So let's go ahead and start creating. Right here we have our song editor. This is your main song editor. And then if you click on this box, you get your uh, baseline editor or loop editor, whatever you want to call it. And you basically can design things here and then drop them in here. And then you can also have separate instrument tracks here. So right now we're on our baseline zero here. You can see it says it there and it's right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, by default, it has a little kicker application here with the default sound. I can press play on that. And it's playing that kicker sound. I can change the tempo here by dragging this up or down, or I can just double click it and put a number in. So if I want to do 120, I can just do that. Uh, by default right here, this might be off. If you click this, it will show you your volume levels, uh, just overview. Uh, you just want to make sure that doesn't go into red too much. But we're just playing this loop right now. It's not part of the song. If you try to render this out, you're not going to get anything because when you uh, render out the song, it's going to render out what's in the song editor. So I'm going to drag this out a little bit, and I'm actually going to left click right here and then click this. This will give us a loop area. I like to do this when I'm making the basic loops for my song. So now, now we have that going, I can click this button right here, which will create a new loop for me. Again, I come over here and under these My Samples, I'm going to go to Drums. I'm going to choose a hi-hat. I'll drop that in here and I can just start dropping a hi-hat in here. Now we don't hear it because right now I'm playing the song. I click here and play just this loop. I can click here to play my song, but I have to drop in this loop and where I want it to play. So now I have my hi-hat going. I can add in more in between here. And I can scroll on these with my mouse scroll wheel to change the volume of each one individually if I want. If you want a little more precise measurements with the volume, you can right click on this and click open in piano roll. And you will see here the notes dropped in there, and right here you click. You can alternate between uh, the note velocity, which is basically the volume, if for, to put it simply, and then you have your panning. So right now you can see the volume of each note is a little different, and I can also change whether it's panning left or right here. And that's each individual note. Now, I can create a new loop here. And let's go ahead and drag a different instrument. So I'm going to go to the star here, and I'm going to go to ZYN add sub effect. That's how I always say it. And I can choose an instrument in here. Let's just go down to like simple uh, synth, maybe a synth piano. Sure. We'll drop that in here. And if I click play here again, it's just going to play this loop, which I don't have anything yet. I can drop in a single note here. But I'm going to turn that off. I'm going to right click, and I'm going to add a note here. I'll just add a C note. Now, remember the last thing you did, so it got it has the panning here. Uh, I want to center that up. So now I have the panning, and my volume's good. Now you control the volume for the entire instrument, not just each individual note right here. So I can turn the volume up and down, and I can also pan this instrument so I can make this instrument all of it come out of the left or right channel rather than individual notes. I can click on the instrument for any of these and it'll bring up options for those instruments. Okay, so let's work with our soft piano here. If, let's go ahead and stop everything. You can sample the notes here. You have some options here which may vary for different instruments. Um, right now, let's go ahead and look at our options here for our stacks and arpeggios. So basically, this is gonna play a chord for you. So I put down a C note here, right? And let me go ahead and play that. Now, if I click this on, 
we can choose different types of chords and you have a bunch of presets here. Octave just means it will play C notes in different octaves when this is hit. Right now we have the range set to zero. If I turn it up to one or two octaves, it will play two C notes, one octave from each other. I can go even higher. So now it's gonna play three octaves of C. Okay, if I want, I can bring this back down a little bit and I'm gonna change this to a major chord. And now, even though I put just a C note, it's gonna play a C major chord for me. And of course you can go through all these different chords here and you can up the range. So now it's playing a whole large octave, or multiple octaves of a C major chord. We'll bring that back down to one. Besides just chords, I can turn that off. I could do arpeggios, and arpeggio is basically playing a chord, but a single note at a time. So again, we have the octave here. Let's go ahead and just make that a major. So now it's playing that major chord, but as an arpeggio, one at a time. I can choose to play it going up, going down. I can go up and then down. I can go down, then up or I can do random, and you can also click here to view each one. Let's set this to up. Now it's playing it at a certain rate right now. We may, we can adjust the timing here to milliseconds, but if you want it to line up with your music perfectly, you can right click this, go to tempo sync, and you can choose like, let's say you want to play every eighth note. Now it's going to pay, play that arpeggio every eighth note. I can also choose every 16th note. So let's go ahead and play our song now. Now I haven't added that instrument to our song track. Let me go ahead and drag this out. Okay, let's go ahead and we'll add another instrument right here. Let's choose something a little simpler here. Let's just go down to plucked. Sure, that works. So again, I can just put a note like this or I can right click and say piano roll and I'll just do this. Now, each instrument I can mute individually here, or if I have a bunch going and I want to hear just one, I can click this button here to listen to just that instrument. Same thing with our tracks up here. If I just want to hear one of these tracks, I can click it there. I can also mute certain tracks. Let's go ahead and just listen to our kicker here. And let me open up my clicker here. There's another tab here called the effects tab. And I can add an effect here, like a reverb. Now I added it specifically to that instrument. But let's say I want to add it the same effect and control it for multiple instru instruments. I can right click this and say remove this plugin. Now you notice there's an effects number here which is set to zero. If I come up here I can click on this. This is my master mixer. Right now we only have one channel. It is our main master channel. I can add another one and I can set different instruments to that. So let me go ahead and I'll set my kicker to that and I will go to my hi-hat here and I'll set that to one as well. And I'll set this uh, piano to, I'll just add another, I'll do effects two. Now, if I turn all these instruments back on, I can control our master volume here, which affects everything. But if I was to turn this down, it's gonna lower the volume on both my kicker and my hi-hat. And bring that back up, if I lower this, it's gonna lower it on that soft piano. I can also add effects to those groups. So if I want to add a reverb to everything on effects one, I can choose effects one. I can click, oh, I didn't mean to add another channel. I can right click that and remove that. With effects one selected, I can add a reverb to that. So I just added a reverb to both my hi-hat and my kicker, and I can stack effects. So I can come in here and I can add an echo effect if I want. So now I have an echo effect and a reverb effect on both my kicker and my hi-hat. And I can, you know, disable one or the other individually. And of course I can right click and completely remove them. Uh, let's see, what else do we want to go over? Let's add another drum of some sort. So I'm going to come up here to my samples. I'm going to go to, actually, let's look at our kicker here, right? So I dragged, the kicker was here by default. 
So again, we have the instruments here and synthesizers. You can drag them over and they'll play the defaults, whatever they're set to. But again, under favorites here, each one of these synthesizers has its own presets. So my hi-hat here is just a recording, it's a sample. But we can also use the synthesizer for a hi-hat. So I can bring that over here. And when I open that up, you can see it's actually using this kicker synthesizer, but it's set to sound like a hi-hat. Let's go ahead and add another track here. I'll drag that out and I will lay down. And again, I can pan this instrument left and right and I can adjust its overall volume here. And if I open it up here, I can also rename it, but if I come in here, this particular, this first page is different settings for different instruments. So I can change how this sounds, and this is how they got the hi-hat sound out of this kicker. You can change where the beginning and end is. You can turn these on. Let's go ahead and just play this new hi-hat here. And I can change the length of it, the gain of it, the slope of it, where it starts and ends. I can make it sound horrible. And of course I can always reset it by dragging this over it. And let's look at other options here. So let's just play, this is my hi-hat sample here. Let's grab just another sample. So I'm gonna come in here and I'll grab a different kicker. There we go, there's a kicker. And let's add another track here. I'll drag this out. And if I was to just play this, you can see this is a sample. It's not a synthesizer, but I can crop this sample if I want using these. So I can move it up here. It's not starting there. I can move it here and it'll start back there. I can cut it short by going like this. And I can also adjust how it fades out here. I can turn this up and you have your delay, your attack, your hold, uh, your decay and your sustain and your release. These are all things I'm not gonna go into them, but like I can sustain this out uh, or set the release out. So now, well, I guess the crop still crops that out. It's not a very good example, but again, this is a very basic overview. These are basically, how the sound comes in, fades in and fades out. That's what all these knobs do here. So you turn that up and you can adjust those. And one more thing you may want to look into is again, let's go ahead and grab uh, some sort of synthesizer from over here. Let me go ahead and grab um, something from in here maybe. Sure. So now I can drop that in here. So instead of a loop track, I can just drop an instrument right in here. I can come in here. So I clicked here to add a section, then I double clicked it again to open this up. And now I can put notes in here. And now that's playing there, but it's not going across the entire thing here. And you can't just drag it like you do the loop editor here. If I want to put this in certain places, what I do is I hit control on my keyboard and I drag this over wherever I want it. I can go like this. And now I have that in different places. And I can remove those. You know, you can right click here and you can see different options. Middle click will erase them. Middle click would be clicking down your mouse wheel on them. Um, so yeah, that is a very quick overview. There's still a lot that you could go over in here, but it, it doesn't really get much simpler than that. Oh, and then when you're ready, you can save and then you can export the entire song. You can export it as a wave, AUG or MP3. You can also export each track individually. So you can uh, export tracks and here you choose what directory you want to export it to. And then you can choose export the entire track or you can export the tracks as loops where it removes the silence at the end. So if you want to make it a loop that you can import into another application and mix. Uh, and then you can also set markers. So right now like, oh, I didn't mean to export that, cancel. Uh, this is my loop. So I can choose, okay, let's say I just want to export that section right there. When I export either the track or the whole song, uh, when we go here, we can choose to just between the loop markers. So now it will just export that portion of the song. Uh, yeah, so that's a quick overview of LMMS. Uh, it still does a whole lot more than this, but I thought I'd give a quick overview just to get you started. Thanks for watching. Filmsbychris.com, that's Chris of the K. There's a link in the description. As always, I hope that you have a great day.